How do I turn the camera on? Um, just the, turn the sound on? The camera. There we go. Yeah. Hi. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I go in here. All right. There. Okay, so this is Susan interview take one. I'd like to know what you feel about not only your future, but about us, the people who kind of got you this far. What is your age and are your generation? I am 82 and I believe we're, I'm a baby boomer. My age is 76. My age is 72. Well, I'm just about to turn 72. All right. And so I'm a baby boomer. I am 81. I am 70 years old, mm -hmm. so I'm a boomer. I'm a baby boomer. How has society changed or hasn't changed? Um, my dad was an immigrant from Italy. So he always used to say, it's no different now than it ever was. Probably that, that's true. Humanity has always been uh, a pretty complicated um, expression of nature. As a woman in a professional world, I was trained as a sculptor. I'm an interdisciplinary artist, and I work in many things, mostly conceptual. But I went to a sculpture program. I got an MFA in sculpture. I was the only woman in that program to try to get a job. Then I took over another job at a university, and I came in to kind of work with these two old guys who had been there forever and they just you know so i think as a woman you just always have those issues i think that still goes on yeah. um, i think there's still um, a lot of movement that needs to happen oh, society has changed enormously i, I believe um, I so they're not early mid 1940s late in the 50s when I was in high school um, in suburban New York there was a very tight uh, road you were expected to travel on and as a girl or as a boy there wasn't enough room there wasn't a lot of room to explore different possibilities work job in fact I wasn't really expected to have a job other than be a nurse or a secretary right. and um, that, you know, that was the 50s. What do you think the transgressions that you felt society at large enacted upon your generation? Oh, well, we've got to start with the Vietnam War. <laughs> um, I mean, we were lied to. Uh, we were manipulated. I, had a, I have a friend right now who, I didn't go to Vietnam. I was mm. in college. I had a deferment. Um, but I have a friend who did go to Vietnam, and he was a grunt. And he came home, and he's done all right. But he, he said to us he felt like he was kidnapped. Mm, wow. And you got to think about that for a minute. You know, yeah. a young American male feeling like he was kidnapped and forced to go to a foreign country and carry a rifle and kill, kill people. I, that's a huge transgression. Yeah. I, but that's sure. against us. Never mind what we did to the Vietnamese and the, the oceans. Yeah. Um, huge transgressions. And I think, you know, it's, it's, some of that is still going on today. What we did as a nation 
across the globe uh, is truly set the stage for a lot of what we're trying to deal with today. When you were young, what were the transgressions that you felt were enacted upon you by the past generation? Oh. Well, I've got a lot of Catholicism in my background. Yeah. And so um, that was such a hidebound religion mm -hmm. and culture. Yeah. Besides being kind of anti-woman, anti-LGBTQ. Um, so, and it was also like a, it didn't, at least my experience of it was that it didn't admit any complexities or shades of gray. You know, you were either a sinner yeah. or a saint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of a transgression enacted upon me. Yeah. And, and I was born in kind of an e evangelical Protestant uh, religion. Um, and in fact, my parents had a cottage um, on Lake Winnipesaukee that was evangelical. You had to be an evangelical to even live there and, or to have a camp there for the summer. And um, I wasn't out then. I wasn't really aware. I, I mean, I think I, I, I knew on some level that I really liked girls, but I wasn't really out, but I really um, rebelled against that whole, you know, you couldn't wear bikinis, you couldn't drink, you couldn't, you know, do all of this stuff while you were there and you had to go to church and you know so that whole experience was kind of not so good. What advice would you give to today's youth? You know be curious and ask questions, um, explore and sort of ignore the political atmosphere which is so angry and cut and dry here one red here blue no listen to each other. And I think your generation is, is a lot better than ours in that. And I would, I would advise you to continue doing that. Well, what advice would you give to today's youth? Fight. Keep fighting. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> we have to pass the torch on. It's not gonna be easy. Uh, as we can see from the flooding here, the environment's going to hell and the politics isn't very good, and you know, you just gotta fight like hell. Mm -hmm. Very true, and I, but I'm encouraged by all the things the youth is doing. Absolutely. What is your advice for today's youth? Mm. Listen to your heart forever. That's where the answers are, it's not your head. It's not your head. Your head, your mind is just a tool. It's a good tool. Be kind, reach out, go to places that scare you, travel, see the world, talk to other people, travel, 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 mm -hmm. get to know people. Stay close to people you care about and who care about you. Life goes better if you love your work. For what advice do you have for today's youth? Oh God, you guys have got it made. Um, get out and enjoy it. Uh, explore the world. I, I didn't start really exploring the world until I was much older. And it's a wonderful, big, beautiful place with wonderful, wonderful people in it. And everywhere you go, people are good. People are nice. I think if you stay insular in your new own neighborhood in your own world, you only you see a lot of the bad around you and you don't get to see the good. There's so much good and so much to explore. What advice would you give to today's youth? You guys got to get going. Uh -huh. You got to get active. First of all, you know, there were a lot of us baby boomers, as I'm sure you know, we were the largest population or sort of cohort of population in this country and we had a lot of influence and sway. Right. There just, there just aren't as many of you right now, yeah, yeah. Um, which in a way is a good thing. But um, I think younger people have to be much more assertive than, than I see them being right now. 
um, or it, things are only going to get worse for you. Uh, the world we're living, leaving you or handing over to you in the next 10 to 20 years is not going to be a friendly, happy place if, yeah. if younger people don't start uh, asserting themselves and uh, insisting that change happen. We probably did kind of a crummy job. We, we apologize. But I, I'd like to know what you feel about us, the people who kind of got you this far. Well, there's a lot of gratitude for people who came before, even though it was people have not always done the right thing. And mm -hmm. that happens um, frequently. And there is a certain amount of bitterness towards that. But overall, is um, would I have done in the same situation? And with the resources people were given, I have much more resources than generations before me. So mm -hmm. I think it's equating apples and oranges when we try to hold other people to our moral standards modernly. As one of my favorite poets said, is hope is a harebell. Sometimes we need to get over hope so much and we need to start doing action. Mm -hmm. And hope is very important for that, but it can also hold us back. Because if we spend most of our time hoping instead of doing, we can let ourselves down and become fragile like a flower. I hope there will be change. I think what you said about change is really true. It's everything's in flux. And I think we perceive the change within ourselves more than the outside world. Will it change? I don't know. But best we can hope for is internal change, right? Mm -hmm.